hey everybody welcome back to Tim Travels um, it's Terry your host um, somebody asked me a question today a comment and they said where does Tim Travels come from did you buy the channel from somebody else and uh, I've made a few dumb purchases in my life but I don't think I'd buy a YouTube channel um, especially one that as of today only has 1708 subscribers but thank you to all of my subscribers. So 1708, uh, not a hugely noteworthy, I mean, certainly lots of stuff happened to humankind. It's a year, right? 365 days. The plague, plague wiped out uh, tons of people in Poland that year. A couple of birth, births of note. On, uh, <clears throat> and it was a leap year, 1708, uh, because on February 29th of that year in Chesterfield County, Virginia, which is um, outside of Richmond, um, a guy named Peter Jefferson was born. His, his, na his dad's name was Thomas Jefferson, and Thomas Jefferson would have a grandson named Thomas Jefferson who would be the author of the Declaration of Independence and... Um, the third president of the United States, president during the, uh, when the Louisiana Purchase was consummated. Um, Peter Jefferson was just, I mean, <laughs> he was just landed gentry. Uh, he was a rich guy. Um, you know, he had a lot of kids, but he only had two sons who survived to adulthood and they split, he died at age 49. And they split his estate. His daughters got nothing. Um, several of his kids. He had two sons that didn't eat, didn't survive past infancy. One that I don't even know the name or I couldn't find the name for. Um, he had a daughter. He had one daughter died at 25. Another was just listed as mentally handicapped. Um, the other daughters all married into prominent families. Um, so anyway, that's Peter Jefferson, born February 29th. Um, another guy that was born in 1708, actually on November 15th, so his birthday's coming up, was a guy named William Pitt. And, or also known as William Pitt the Elder, uh, because he had a son named William Pitt. Now, the city of Pittsburgh is named after William Pitt the Elder, who was a British Prime Minister. Of note, um, about William, his son, William Pitt the Younger, William Pitt the Younger was actually the longest serving British Prime Minister. He served like 20 years. But the interesting thing about William Pitt the Younger was that he was the last Prime Minister of Great Britain and the first Prime Minister of the United Kingdom because in 1800 so this is post revolution right and William Pitt the younger was president I, I believe he was president during the revolution um, so in 1800 there's England Scotland and Wales as well as I guess back then it would also have been Ireland um, or at least Northern Ireland they basically became the United Kingdom okay so three countries plus part of Ireland or maybe it was all of Ireland I have to check on that but anyway that's that's the Pitt family um, and another Pitt is Harvey Pitt who's an American lawyer who was chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission when I worked there while in law school. That's, and I don't know if Harvey's related to them, but it wouldn't be surprising. Anyway, so um, I'm here at Sheets in uh, Groveport, um, Groveport, Ohio. Um, made my delivery already. Just got to pick up a load tomorrow uh, nearby. But um, Sheets is cool. 
if you've never been to Sheets. I've actually introduced a couple of trainees to Sheets, um, and they both liked it um, for various reasons. But Sheets has a really good made-to-order menu, um, way better than fast food. You can get salads, good subs. You can get you can get breakfast food 24/7. Um, so yeah, it's a good place to stop. Um, although I got to tell you, and you can you can revisit this video if you ever hear this happening but i hate and you guys know this um i hate when bobtails park in big spots and there's got to be a dozen because i'm actually parked like parallel to a guy that's up along a curb but there's got to be got to be a dozen bobtails parked in in regular truck parking and um I have a plan like when I'm done driving for anybody and you know I just still have a CDL I am legit gonna buy an old piece of shit pup okay and if you don't know what a pup is it's a tw one of those 28 foot trailers you always see behind like on FedEx ground or whatever UPS I'm gonna buy a pup and I might have to if I don't have my own tractor I'll just rent a day cab because uh, you can do that and I'm gonna take that pup, I'm gonna have no license plates on it, I'm gonna gouge off any serial numbers, any identifying information, and I'm gonna pay cash for it and not and give them a false name, something like Tim Travels. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a truck stop and I'm gonna find somebody that's bobtail that's backed into a spot, and I'm gonna back that pup in in front of them. Then I'm gonna drop that pup and Shortly after I drop it, I am going to totally slash all the tires. I am going to crank up the landing gear as high as humanly possible, then do everything I can to sabotage the landing gear from cranking down. Um, or I might lower it and sabotage it. I'm not sure which. But in order, and I'm going to slash the airlines. And so when that fucking bobtail driver that took up a spot for an actual truck wants to leave he's gonna have to hire a freaking tow truck uh, to get out of that spot and oh by the way if you think oh well he'll just you know other people will pull out and he'll drive around no no because I'm gonna catch some dude that backed up to the curb in a especially in a place where there's nothing you know like there's a earthen dam behind it a big ass fence whatever and I'm gonna drop that pup about an inch in front of his bumper and he ain't going anywhere and uh, so if you ever hear that happening uh, just smile and think of me I'm just doing it for the people okay so a couple of different people um, have asked me about kind of a couple of different issues, but they're sort of related. I got an email from um, a lady who had started out at some starter company like a lot of us do. But whatever company she was with provided almost no training. And she, she described it as like, you know, two weeks and then they're just like see ya you, here you go here's a truck drive around America and she had um, she had a, a mishap or maybe a couple of mishaps and when I say a couple of mishaps I don't mean like she killed a school bus full of kids while she was drunk I just mean like she you know like curbed it or um, you know backed into a pylon just little stuff that people do in trucks let's be candid and you know the way she described it I was like mm, none of that sounds like super concerning right it's just you get used to driving a truck you kind of have a feel for it and so forth and you know it doesn't help when people don't get trained um, because a lot of the things that you can learn in an extended training period are things that would prevent you from making mistakes like that even if your instructor you know doesn't explicitly tell you they might be like oh hey um, 
go look behind us, <laughs> you know, and you figure it out. You you start to get a you start to get a feel for your truck, for the length and and you know how it how they react and and stuff like that. So anyway, she said that she was let go from this company and that they had they submitted a negative DAC report. Now, DAC, for those of you who don't know, stands for driver a check. I'm totally serious about that. However, and not all companies report to DAC. Some of them um, only review DAC. Now, some companies maybe don't even do that because I'm guessing you got to pay for it. Um, I got to back up here. Okay, sorry about that. I thought the guy that was inside of me wanted to leave, so I wanted to get out of his way a little bit. And then it turns out I did see a spot open behind me, so I just backed straight into it. So, um, getting back to the DAC, or the DAC report. Um, you know, just because a trucking company says something doesn't mean that it's true. And, sorry, I'm just going to grab my... Uh, my studio lighting here so you can see me um, it doesn't mean that it's true furthermore um, if you dispute something that's on your DAC and you can do that by going on go online find out the DAC people and dispute ask for a copy of it and dispute it and here's the thing just like with credit reports, I it wouldn't surprise me. Now, I'm not saying I know this because I've never tried to dispute anything. I've never seen my own DAC. But um, it wouldn't surprise me that if you dispute something, something and the company fails to respond when DAC sends out a request for information, then that negative comment is taken off your DAC. But... The other question that this person, this lady asked me was, well, how do I get back into the industry? Like, how do I rehabilitate my resume, basically? How do I, you know, get back in the good graces of the trucking world? And my answer to that is this. And, and <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a sleight of hand that I learned from a dude who was actually at Trans Am. So this guy had a CDL B and he was working for a garbage collecting company. So he was driving a garbage truck and he got into an accident and apparently it was his fault and they fired him. But what happened was he, um, when he applied to Trans Am, um, they ask him how much experience, and, and I don't know if, I think maybe he just went to like a truck driving school and got, get, went from a B to an A. And so when he applied, they said, well, how much experience do you have as a CDL driver? And he said, oh, I have this many months. But he included his CDL B time and apparently the garbage company, the trash collection company, they don't, they didn't use DAC. So there was, and, and I guess, you know, he didn't get a ticket or anything. So there was nothing on his record that said he had a wreck that he was at fault for. And so he got hired by Trans Am. Now, is Trans Am the most, you know, you know, the A plus company? I don't think so. Right, I, I haven't heard a lots of great things about it, but that really doesn't matter, right? What matters is you get time in the seat and you establish a record of not getting tickets. And there, you know, and it sounds dumb to say you establish not doing something, but really that's what we're talking about, right? You establish a record of not getting tickets. You establish a record of you know, not getting CSA points. And then next thing you know, you've done even 
six months or a year at one of these carriers and then you can just say oh I want to go on to a better carrier right now some carriers want to know your three-year history okay some don't they just want to know you they want to know your work history um, but they might not check and that's the thing right like if you think about all that you know about trucking companies, ask yourself this, do the people at the trucking companies in recruiting and HR and some of the other places really impress you that much, like they're really digging deep? I mean, come on, the FBI can't even do good security clearance checks a lot of times. I mean, the only reason that we don't have more people spying on the United States or committing espionage of some sort is that People are just not pre, you know, like they're not preconditioned to do that. It's just blind luck. Because it's not like background investigations are really as thorough as you think. So, go to a company and, and maybe, maybe you just start out with your CDL A driving a school bus, right? Because I know for a fact, well, I don't know for but I'm guessing a lot of these school bus contractors or school districts, they don't check DAC, right? Um, I'm guessing, like I had, a, I had a trainee, Connie, you remember Connie? She had driven a school bus, she had driven a ready mix truck, she had done all sorts of things that required a commercial driver's license, she just didn't have a CDL A. But if you already have an A and you just need to rehabilitate that resume, Go do any CDL work, because here's the thing. If it requires a CDL, it's driving with a CDL, okay? Now, they might say, well, how, how much of that was tractor trailer combination? You could say, oh, well, none, but I drove a school bus. And, you know, a lot of people probably think that school bus drivers have to be, like, really safe and stuff, but I don't think that's true. I mean, honestly, I was, pa I was in a 50 mile an hour zone yesterday and I was passed by a dude in a school bus from a public school district in Virginia who was actually had kids in the bus um, and he was doing 61 when he cut over in front of me to pass another semi on the right. And this is on 460 which is a really tight road. No shoulder it's, and all that's separating oncoming traffic is some paint couple of yellow lines so I think anything that requires a CDL is CDL experience and you can list it like that and a lot of these companies right like school bus companies ready mix companies dump truck companies it's they they call themselves transportation companies and I'll t I'll give you a little secret I know for a fact that a lot of trucking companies do very cursory reviews or, or verifications, right? And I'll also tell you that if you've been driving a school bus for one school year, which is like eight months, and I'm, I'm not saying you can make a living doing that, right? I'm just saying that it's CDL experience. But if you've been driving, and you could say, oh yeah, I did it for a year, and you're not in prison for anything, a lot of trucking companies will hire you. Are they the best? Maybe not. But that's not what you have to worry about. Now, I asked around, and one of the other suggestions for somebody that has kind of a sketchy record is somebody said Western Express. Um, you know, somebody said, and, and here's the thing. Um, don't worry about a company's reputation. Only worry about your own reputation. Because, you know, people say, oh, Western Express, they hire convicts. And my answer to that has always been, yeah, who cares, right? Like, a lot of convicts are just people that got caught. I, I practice law, I can tell you that. Uh, convicts are just people that got caught a lot of times. Um, the other thing I will say is that, you know, as long as you're safe and you have a good record, um, potential companies aren't going to care. Right? They aren't going to care that the company you work for had a bad rep. Uh, another carrier that was recommended was May. They're based in Oregon. They mostly run 
the western two-thirds i mean you occasionally see those guys in like illinois and stuff but that's about as far east as i really ever see them i do i do see them spending a lot of time on i-80 um i always see them on i-80 back and forth across wyoming but so that's that's kind of like you know how to rehabilitate but like i said if somebody files a DAC and it's bull crap information then challenge it and you know it is illegal by the way it is illegal to say negative things and here's the thing a lot of companies will in in outside the trucking world will only verify employment they won't comment on somebody's performance because it's kind of subjective sometimes and companies have been sued over it I'm not suggesting that maybe you want to sue a company over what they put in DAC, but um, you know, you might also want to sue a company for what they put in DAC. I mean, if this is what your career is, and by the way, the lady that reached out to me left another viable career to do this. I mean, you know, maybe she was like me and she was kind of done with that career, but the fact remains that she's not able to earn a living or hasn't been to this point um, you know without uh, you know without some is some trouble getting getting a job um, the other reason to protect your driving record your DAC especially if it's bogus information and and, and you all know you all know when anything happens right Safety departments at every company act like you kidnapped the Lindbergh baby, okay? They act like it's the end of the freaking world because you got a scratch on a truck, okay? And so what I say is if that's how they act towards you, what are they putting in writing and sending off, especially if the company lets you go, right? What are they putting in that report and sending away to some anonymous people that you've never spoken to don't know who they are and all these other people are looking at this right a lot of times you know you need to challenge that and the other thing too is get out in front of the DAC when you apply you talk to a recruiter say hey I'm gonna apply here's what you're gonna see in my DAC but here's the truth condition the market because if you do that then when they when somebody gets that DAC report they're automatically gonna know, say hey this person told me up front that they had some negative remarks in their DAC it means they know what's going on and they they dispute it and so then maybe it's an instance of well I got to check with the safety department and maybe the safety department's like you know what that's not really that big of a deal or let's put them on probation but we got trucks that people aren't driving you know and that's the other thing too if you know there's a company that's got 4,000 trucks and they only got 3,000 drivers um, those trucks they're still putting they're still costing that company money so anyway that's that's my advice on that particular issue the other issue that I've been asked about is somebody got a CDL, but because the market is tightening, they're having trouble getting their foot in the door. And what my advice on that is simple. Apply to as many places as you can, right? Somebody is going to give you a job, okay? 10street.com is this clearinghouse where they handle like applications for all these companies but if you go to some some of these like websites like I think smart trucker or whatever you can fill out preliminary information and I'm telling you your phone's gonna blow up okay now don't get me wrong there's gonna be some sketch companies that have terrible retention that are gonna reach out to you. But what do you care, right? Your job one is getting a job, right? It, again, going back to reputation, who cares if CRST wants to hire you? 
go drive for CRST for six months, keep the truck out of a ditch, don't run over any old ladies, no CSA points, you know, no tickets, no reportable accidents, and apply somewhere else. Six months is all you need at a lot of places, you know? Some, some companies, three months. You know, they just want to know that the shakedown cruise has been accomplished and they feel like you're going to be, you've done j enough to make them feel comfortable that you're not like going to wreck your first week on the job. So anyway, I, 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 I think there's still plenty of opportunity in trucking. Um, there is always going to be there are always going to be jobs for people that don't have tickets, don't have CSA points, um, you know, don't have horrible DAX or whatever. But now here's here's one other kind of pro tip: if you've had an incident that is DAC reportable, and probably almost anything is, don't leave the company you're at because a company might keep you. Um, but you don't want to take a chance that another company will be like, oh, hey, you know, you know, because some companies, and, and I've heard of this, they'll give you a, a conditional offer of employment. You, t you tell your old company you're leaving, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know what? Uh, the safety department looked at your DAC, and yeah, we're, we're going to have to rescind that offer. Don't put yourself in that situation. If you're if you're in a driver's seat every day that you drive without any problems is is a positive and every second you can put between the last incident and you know like I guess I guess the I guess the metaphor would be put it in your rearview mirror keep driving carefully and safely until you can't see it anymore um, because that's going to show that you learned the lesson and you've remediated, etc. So, but but don't try to jump ship when you got some fresh crap on your deck. Okay, that that I think is a mistake. But anyway, I hope some of this helped. Um, again, appreciate any feedback, constructive feedback. Um, yeah, and uh, so we will talk to you soon. Bye.